All right, welcome to 10 Minute Book Club. We are on page, what page is it? 16, starting chapter two, The Law of a Ring. All right, starting the tab. <clears throat> The law of awareness, you must know yourself to grow yourself. No one can produce great things who is not thoroughly sincere in dealing with himself. James Russell Lowell. In 2004, Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore starred in a comedy called Fifty First Dates. It is the story of a man who falls in love with a young woman only to discover that she cannot remember him the next day. In fact, she can't remember anything that has happened to her since a car crash she was in a year before. She is destined to live every day as if it were the day before her accident. It was a cute movie, even if the premise seems a bit silly. But what if something like that were true and it actually happened? No recall. There is a famous neuropsychology case of someone with a similar condition that was first documented in 1957 and has been studied by thousands of doctors and researchers. The patient is called Henry M. <coughs> He was born in Hartford, Connecticut in 1926, and he suffered from a case of epilepsy that was so severe and debilitating that he couldn't function. At age 27, he underwent an experimental surgery in which parts of his brain were removed to try to treat his epilepsy. The good news was that after the surgery, he no longer suffered constant debilitating seizures. In addition, he suffered no negative impact on his intelligence, personality, or ability to interact with others socially. However, there was one horrible side effect. He seemed to have no short-term memory. Henry M. couldn't remember anything that happened after the surgery. He didn't recognize his doctors. He couldn't find his way to the bathroom. When he returned home, he would do the same jigsaw puzzles every day and read the same magazines without having any memory of having done so. When his family moved to a new house, he could never remember having moved, nor could he find the way to his new home, though he remembered his old one vividly. When interviewed 30 minutes after lunch, he could not recall a single item he had eaten. In fact, he could not remember having eaten at all. He was stuck in time, unable to learn, grow, and change. What a tragedy. Whew, that would be hard. Do you have a sense of direction? Any person who wants to grow but doesn't know himself is in many ways like Henry M. To grow, you must know yourself, your strengths and weaknesses, your interests and opportunities. You must be able to gauge not only where you've been, but also where you are now. Otherwise, you cannot set a course for where you want to go. And of course, every time you want to learn something, you must be able to take the new thing you've learned today and build upon what you learned yesterday to keep growing. That's the only way to gain traction and keep improving yourself. To reach your potential, you must know where you want to go and where you currently are. Without both of those pieces of information, you're liable to get lost. Knowing yourself is like reading you are here on a map when you want to find your way to a destination. I've observed that there are really only three kinds of people when it comes to having direction in life. Number one, people who don't know what they would like to do. These people are often confused. They lack a strong sense of purpose. They don't possess a sense of direction for their lives. If they are growing, they are unfocused about it. They dabble, they drift, they can't reach their potential because they have no idea what to shoot for. Number two, people who know what they would like to do but don't do it. These people are usually frustrated. Every day they experience the gap between where they are and where they want to be. Sometimes they aren't doing what they want because they worry that it will cause them to neglect other responsibilities, such as providing for their families. Sometimes they aren't willing to pay the price to learn, grow, and move closer to where they want to be. Other times, fear prevents them from changing course to pursue their passion. No matter what the reason, they too miss their potential. Number three, people who know what they would like to do and do it. The third kind of people know themselves, possess a strong sense of passion, are focused in purpose, grow in areas that help them move closer to their purpose, and do what they were created to do. The word that best describes them is fulfilled. Oof, I like these three words. These are cool. They are so true, because I've been every single one of them. <laughs> um, few situations are as extreme as Henry M's, yet most people seem to fall into the first category. They don't know what they want to do. I believe the main reason 
is that they don't know themselves as well as they should, and thus remain unfocused in their growth. Knowing yourself isn't necessarily an easy thing for everyone to do. In a commencement address at Princeton, future American President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed, We live in an age disturbed, confused, bewildered, afraid of its own forces, in search not merely of its road, but even of its direction. There are many voices of counsel, but few voices of vision. There is much excitement and feverish activity, but little concert of thoughtful purpose. We are distressed by our ungoverned, undirected energies and do many things, but nothing long. It is our duty to find ourselves. Wilson made that statement in 1907. <clears throat> Imagine what he might have said if he were alive today. What makes finding themselves and growing to their potential difficult for some people is that it can be a bit of a catch-22. You have to know who you are to grow to your potential, but you have to grow in order to know who you are. So what's the solution? Explore yourself as you explore growth. The way to start is to pay attention to your passions. For me, that started when I focused my growth in areas that I knew would help me as a minister, which was my passion. The four areas can be represented by the word real. Relationships, equipping, attitude, and leadership. My passion led to my growth, but then my growth led to my passion. As I discovered my love and ability for leadership, Oh, there's a pen. <laughs> that has continued to be a major focus of my personal growth for nearly 40 years. Other areas that passion and purpose revealed include faith, family, communication, and creativity. All of these continue to be important parts of my life where I love to learn and to grow. How to find your passion and purpose. Psychotherapist Nathaniel Brandon asserts, The first step toward change is awareness. The second step is acceptance. If you want to change and grow, then you must know yourself and accept who you are before you can start building. Here are 10 questions to help you start working through that process. Number one, do you like what you're doing now? I'm amazed by how many people I meet every day who don't like what they do for a living. Why do they do it? I understand the necessity of having to make a living. We've all done jobs we didn't love. I worked in a meat packing plant when I was in college. I didn't like that job, but I didn't stay there my whole life doing something I found unfulfilling. If I'd loved it and had fit and had fit sorry and it had fit my passion and purpose, I would have stayed there and tried to build a career, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. Philosopher Abraham Kaplan noted If as Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living, so the unlived life is worth examining. <clears throat> there it is. If you're not enjoying what you do for a living, you need to take some time to examine why. Bless you. Is it a risk making a change from what you're currently doing to what you want to do? Of course. You might fail. You might find out that you don't like it as much as you expected. You might not make as much money. But isn't there also great risk in staying where you are? You might fail. You might get fired. You might take a pay cut, or worst of all, you might come to the end of your life feeling regret for never having reached your potential or doing what you love. Which risk would you rather live with? Number two, what would you like to do? There's definitely a direct connection between finding your passion and reaching your potential. TV journalist Mar Maria Bartiromo says, Every successful person I've met has a strong sense of his or her unique abilities and aspirations. They are leaders in their own lives, and they dare to pursue their dreams on their own terms. Have you found and harnessed your passion? Do you know what you would like to do? When you do, it makes all the difference. Why? When you tap into your passion, it gives you the E and E factor, energy and excellence. You will never fulfill your destiny doing work you despise. Passion gives you an advantage over others because one person with passion is greater than 99 who have only an interest. Ooh, that's good. Passion gives you energy. <clears throat> As a kid, all I ever wanted to do was play. I didn't like work. But I learned the power of tapping into my passion when I transitioned from high school to college. In high school, I was making, I was simply marking time. But when I got to college, I was working in areas connected to my purpose. I was pursuing my passion. That got me excited. I'm still excited about what I do. Now that I'm in my mid-60s, people ask me when I will retire. To be honest, that's not on my radar. Why would anyone want to quit doing what he loves? 
nothing's work unless you'd rather be doing something else. Want to know when I'll retire? When I die. <laughs> That's when I'll stop speaking and writing books. How do you know what you want to do? How do you tap into your passion? Listen to your heart. Pay attention to what you love doing. Pulitzer Prize winning. Oh, okay. Tap in there. So good. So good. We have to find our passion and purpose. Decide who we are. We know ourselves in that home. I feel like we're just getting into the topic. I want to keep reading. <laughs> hmm. 